All right, everybody. I am excited for this one. This is uh, one that's been on my list for a little bit. I've been kind of taking a break, but what a what a perfect way to get right back into it here with my grandma. Um, we talk about a lot what it was like back when she was growing up. It definitely gets emotional towards the end. We have some good laughs, share some family stories. Um, ends a little abruptly um, due to my emotional state, but I just am so grateful she was able to sit down with me and have this conversation. We talked for another 45 minutes after this about things that she wasn't comfortable talking about on the mic. And, you know, I just, I love my grandma. She's, she's great. She's got a great family. And I learned, I learned a lot from this conversation. You just keep going. It doesn't matter what happens. You keep going. Don't think about the bad stuff. Just, just keep living your life. And that's all you can do. And that's how you, that's how you stay happy. You know, she had, a lot of hard times that she just went through and she didn't let it get her down. She didn't let it define her. And, you know, it was, it was really nice for me to see that and be, be reminded of that. Cause you know, you forget. So, um, thank you, grandma. I love you. Enjoy everybody. All right. So when was your last birthday? last year <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well how old are you now now um 80 plus say 80 and a half you're 80 and a half yeah so you were born it's the 20 2021 you're 80 and a half 1940 1940 what was it like back then <laughs> compared to now a little, little different grandma <laughs> <laughs> quite yeah, yeah. Uh, you talking about living conditions or where it's you just lived? like everything like what what was your favorite part about back then like what do you miss well anything as a baby i i wouldn't know yeah remember <clears throat> but uh i don't know never gave it a thought <laughs> for that young mhm well just i mean even when you were teenager you know i obviously when i was a teenager it was much different than when you were a teenager very much you, that would put you a teen in what the mid 1950s correct <clears throat> so that's i mean i was a teenager in uh mid 2000s <laughs> so that's a big difference <laughs> yeah that's 50 years difference yeah well, that's a whole world that's totally different mm-hmm uh, <clears throat> It was a great generation to live, to be, uh, grow up in. Yeah. It was, um, all the friends that I have today, I still had then at that time. And we all agree, uh, we liked the time that we lived in. That's uh, good. Even though there were <clears throat> things that weren't as they should be, but we didn't know the difference. <laughs> things like women's rights or stuff like right. that. Right, yeah. How was it like growing up through that? Because I know, did that affect your jobs and what career paths you had open to you? Oh, definitely. You you didn't have choices. If when you graduated from high school, you were either a secretary or a nurse. Really? And uh, it's the only option, uh, unless you had a family that was real gutsy to get you into the educational field to learn something, like maybe a doctor, but or um, lawyers or, you know, the big money occupations. Mm -hmm. But women were uh, in tune too much with men to do what they wanted to do. They or, were more, let's... Submissive. You were brought up to be, <clears throat> uh, to kind of follow and help help the man. And yeah. That was, that was how it was back but then. But I was a little different in that field. Yeah. <laughs> How so? <laughs> Ain't no way I'm getting you a cup of coffee. There's nothing wrong with your feet. You go get it yourself. Heck yeah. And the same with the dinner plates. Yeah. I'm not fixing your plate. You get what you want. Yeah. And I'm not cutting your meat up for <laughs> you. <laughs> so did, 
Did you get that from like your parents <clears throat> or what? Where did that come from? My mother-in-law. Oh, <laughs> great grandma Zumwalt. That's would be it. Yeah. She catered to men, but you know, that's what she grew up with. That's what she knew, mm -hmm. but she had a career too. Yeah. But, uh, what did she do? She was a beautician. Okay. But it was that more. That makes sense. Because I just remember she always had her hair done up and mm -hmm. she drove the, the big giant Cadillac. But that was more survival. Uh, when you had an occupation as a hairdresser or nurse or whatever, it was survival. Uh, and a lot of women married for survival, so to speak. Yeah. Um, because you weren't in the area of where you could get educated or uh you didn't have as many options to succeed right yeah you kind of had go be a housewife to somebody who makes money for you and that's your living situation or you know i guess what would the other option be at that point just if you got lucky for lack of a better term you'd maybe get sent off to school by your parents if they had money well <laughs> this is crazy but if your parents sent you to college it was usually to find a mate that would be making lots of money. Hmm. That was the word out. That's so wild. Yeah, ter terrible. I think some people still do that, but that's not why they go to college. Right. But I think yeah. some people realize, holy cow, I am. I'm going to try to find somebody who makes money, and you know, it might be convenient if they like me back. But the thing is, those marriages are still intact. So something so worked. Are, are you saying that you have friends who have, that's what happened to them? Yes. Wow. And they admit it. Really? That's why I only know it. <laughs> so. It's nice that, that's what that's what's so amazing. So what is it, the Beaumont Beauties? That well, was... we're not going to put a name on it. But... Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, but, so you had a group of friends in high school who you're still friends with today. Uh, several groups, actually. That is amazing because a lot of people today don't have friends from high school. No, I have high school and I have church friends and I have sorority friends. So and how, I also have grade school friends. How did you how did you keep in contact because there were no cell phones, there was no social media. Like over over the years, how have you stayed in touch with these people? Well, we were pretty much in the same neighborhood. So it was local. Uh, yeah, and you could walk. And then if, well, when we were in high school, if it wasn't the neighborhood, you, you thought nothing of drive, getting on a bus or a streetcar to yeah. get wherever you had to go. So and, did did you feel more safe back then than you do now? I never thought about safety. I just did it. Yeah. Uh, never dawned on me um, the way you people have to think today. Yeah. I mean, what kind of brought us here right now was somebody <clears throat> just broke, your the window in your car yeah. yesterday well that's assumed but uh yeah I, you know it could have been a bb or it could have been we don't know but it anyway somebody <laughs> aimed at it and it broke yeah somehow and it, it was broke. vicious mean stuff that needs to not happen yeah i mean you you haven't had the best luck with that house there with being off that kind of main main it's like a cut through road really and there's a lot of traffic that goes past there that is kind of riffraff sometimes Oh, it used to be a country road when we moved there. Isn't that wild? Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, where I live now in Arnold, that used to be a country road because yeah. I'm friends with one of the neighbors, and he said he's been there 40 years, and he just kind of watched it all develop. Yeah. But, no, we I think we're in pretty good shape where we're at. Mm -hmm. We've never had any uh, big deal happen or anything like that. Well, that's good. Um, yeah, I, I think it was, what, just another window and maybe somebody – would drive through the lawn once or twice. Yeah. Which wasn't nothing super bad. Well, yeah, we did have some guy that uh, <laughs> one inch and he would have been dead, but it was in the middle of the night and uh, he hit my car and gave it a 360 turnaround. Holy cow. Uh, but uh, we never caught him, but we kind of know who it was. Really? <laughs> hmm. And of course... It wasn't a big enough crime that anybody does anything about. When was this? Because um, I don't remember that. No, I don't think you were old enough to remember that. So, do you, because of that, 
I feel like the law has changed as far as how it's enforced because I remember going to school and teachers, you know, it was a mechanic school. So the teachers were all kind of gearheads back then. And some of the older teachers would say, Hey, all right, we used to run from the cops and we'd get away with it because they'd soup their cars up and the cops couldn't catch them. And now that's not a thing. Like you can't run from the cops. You can, but they're they're, not chasing you if you want to know. Yeah. If they want to catch you, they will. Yeah. Um, where it's it, a more sophisticated form of uh, uh, criminology trying yeah. to get things and picked up and done. I feel like if that <clears throat> accident in your driveway would have happened recently, then probably the cops would have pursued and caught that person. Whereas back then, it might have just been like, ah, oh, it happened, nobody got hurt, here's some insurance claim. You know, I think they still do that same way. Yeah. I don't think that's changed. That's unfortunate. <clears throat> I guess you got to pick your battles. I, I don't know. Yeah. They got hard jobs as it is, especially now with all all the race stuff going on. But mm. how was that back then? Because you, times were different. Back well, then segregation for race. happened yeah. while we uh, were while we were in high school, mm-hmm. but nobody seemed to be bothered by it. We accepted everybody, at least the ones friends I had yeah. did. Uh, some of our best friends were. Uh, of a different uh, color, I guess, would be the proper name today. I, I honestly don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't recollect that anybody I ran around with had any qualms about any of it. It didn't matter, black, white, whatever. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, I wonder why, I just can't believe it became such a big... Well, somewhere along the line, <clears throat> and some people did. It was just the people that I was surrounded with that... Yeah accepted everything and it it goes back to religion <laughs> as you grow up you always sang the song jesus loves the, all the little children of the world red and yellow black and white they are precious in his sight huh. so that was kind of uh what rings in your head yeah that everybody is the same and everybody loves everybody yeah it it kind of stinks that it it is such a uh, hard thing for some people well to, i'm sure it was through. there and there was a great divide i mean if they didn't live in our neighborhood yeah uh, they uh would come and do different work but they come from somewhere else they had their own neighborhoods and that's what they liked is what i understood mm-hmm. so it wasn't um like everybody mixed together yeah, yeah. It wasn't like a, we want you over there and you want us over here. No, it was their own decision as far as I know. Yeah. Uh, and they would come in to do different jobs. Uh, people that had a little money hired them to do j- different jobs, but they had their own community and their own jobs. Mm-hmm. And as far as how much money they made or whatever, I don't know. That yeah. just was not a... We didn't have the televisions and all that to be concerned with or to learn yeah. what's going on. Do you think that was better not having that uh, source of input as far as what's good and what's bad, what they're telling you is good and what what's bad? Oh, it could be in some ways, but on other things, you need to know what's real or what really is. I don't think you can have that anymore now. I think there's so much influence via... Uh, fake news is what they call fake it. Fake news. There's a lot of it. That's backed by money. You <clears throat> totally. Know? And yeah. like, I don't watch the news now. If something really big is happening, somebody tells me. <laughs> yeah. Like, my brother-in-law knows that I don't watch the news. We don't have regular TV I, and nothing. Mm-hmm. And he's like, hey, you need to look this up and check it out. And I'm like, yeah. okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I'm at that point, too. But <clears throat> another reason is too many commercials. That's wasting too much time sitting there. Advertising. Yeah. You told me, what, you pulled out like 20 or 30 pages out of a magazine that was all just advertisement? Yes. <laughs> That's why I quit. Uh, I don't want magazines anymore because you have more uh, advertising than you do uh, information. And that's the only thing that keeps those magazines going. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's weird, the whole marketing <laughs> world. And, you know, I watch a lot of YouTube and... YouTube to me is like my entertainment slash informational TV because I get to pick and choose what I want to watch when I want to watch it and who I want to watch depending on what mood I'm in. And I've seen some of these YouTube people go from, 
you know, 10,000 people who watch their stuff or follow them to two and a half million people. And they went from one car to like 10 cars that are each like 40, 50 grand a piece. And then they buy these. I just, one guy bought a racetrack, an old racetrack, fixed it up, and he has <clears throat> racing events there now. And he's sponsored by a bunch of big companies. And it's just amazing that you can. And not none of that stuff was on purpose, really. It was just, this is what I like doing, and then I'm going to film it. And then some people were interested, and then more people were interested. And he got famous on accident and by doing what he loved doing. He didn't try to go out and get famous, but, you know. That's a good life. <clears throat> I Yeah, I'd love it. <laughs> yeah. But, um, <clears throat> I, I mean, I can't think of a better, better uh, career path. You know, if somebody could say, hey, go out and do whatever you want to do this day and people are going to like it and then you'll get money for doing it and just keep doing what it is that you like to do. Because most people go to a job and it's a job, like it's work. And when you when it's something that you enjoy doing, it's work, but it doesn't register the same. Yeah, but it's survival. That's what you look at it as mm -hmm. a job that you don't really care for. Yeah. But you have to make up your mind to make it good and like it yeah you fool yourself <laughs> yeah i mean it you're the little do you have a little voice in your head that you constantly talks to you and you talk back to it and it's kind of your consciousness i just guess just look for the good or the fun times or whatever you want to yeah it's really what you make it yeah that's totally it and it's it's very hard to it's much easier to look at all the negative things mm -hmm. that are going on around you well, i think that was the thing with my friends from high school era that we never thought about that we just did whatever we did and had fun mm -hmm. nothing else really i don't want to say nothing else really mattered but you just kind of stuck to what you were in the mood for and well the, we didn't know that much in the world because a lot of us didn't even have a tv let alone a radio yeah so uh so what did you guys do for fun oh dear I don't know, but we had fun. <laughs> uh, just being together, talking, that was fun. Picnics, lots of picnics. Yeah. And hikes. Lots of things with nature. Weenie roast out in Forest Park. So it sounds like, you know, your generation was just a lot more active in general because nowadays it's, oh, we go play video games here we go watch this show here. We sit on our phones and... You know, if you... <clears throat> you walked a lot to get to wherever you were going. Mm -hmm. We walked to school. We walked to church. We walked to a friend's house. We played outside till the street lights came on. Did that mean it was time to go home? Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Better get yourself back in that house by that time. <laughs> <laughs> My mom used to... Uh, she used to struggle to get me in. That's part of the reason we didn't have... <laughs> like family dinners is because each kid was usually off doing something different. And it was very hard to coordinate us all to get back because if I was playing outside, digging a hole in the dirt, I didn't want to come back in and eat or w do whatever she wanted me to do. And, uh, I think that that freedom helped me grow a lot. Hmm. Could have been the other, been the other way around because I know if your parents called you, you dropped whatever you were doing and you done what you were told. Yeah. And you uh, never even thought about having a choice. You just did it. Yeah. At least that, who I knew did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I got lucky. As long as they knew I was out in the back and I wasn't causing ruckus with well, anybody else or anything or being nuisance to them. Yeah, well, that's the time. Yeah. It changes. You know, but I just, it's still is amazing that you have so many friends who you're in touch with from yeah. <clears throat> for that long. You hear about the guy who came looking me up from grade school? <laughs> no. When did this happen? <laughs> Just recently. What did, he, what did he have to say? He, uh... Was it Facebook? No, no, no. He just called me on the phone, and I just remembered his name. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... He wanted to, I guess, renew uh, things 
And he also really wanted to thank me for something he had been guilty of all his life. He had been oh, really? carried this guilt thing, which I had no clue to. <laughs> so, Do I dare ask what happened? Well, you know, he said he wouldn't have graduated if it wasn't for me. Oh, wow. So apparently I helped him through his schooling. In what way? Like, did you... Catered. Um, did you, like, tutor him? Probably. But I did that for everybody. I was always... Just helping. Yeah. I was really... Um, <clears throat> teacher's... Not teacher's pet. Just just a big helper in the school. You're a good student. Yeah. <clears throat> that's true. Mm-hmm. So you went to school... What did what did you you didn't go to college did you? No. So what did you do after high school? When did like how old were you when you graduated? Because you graduated early or I young. Did. <clears throat> I um, had just turned seventeen, I believe. So could have been sixteen. Uh, but I'd already worked <clears throat> my senior year, so I just went on ahead and joined the company that I was working for at that time. Which was what? Southwestern Bell. What were you doing for them? Stenographer. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's a secretary. Okay. But a secretary where I never got coffee for anybody. Oh, a good kind of secretary. <laughs> yeah, no. You just did the job that you did. Just take uh, shorthand. Do you know what shorthand is? I kind of. It's like symbols instead of words, right? Right. <laughs> Do you still know that? Yeah. Oh, wow. So you can write really fast if you wanted to. <clears throat> well, I'd have to do a little refresher. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you could. But I I still have my stenographer book okay. so I can look it up. I, but you remember some of the things. Yeah. But uh, it was like a secretary. So from there, where did you go? Because I know you <clears throat> retired from Edward Jones. Was that a similar position there? Uh, I was not a... Se- no, we didn't do shorthand. We, you were onto the computers by that time. The- How was that change? Going from writing everything... Did you guys have... You guys had typewriters, right? Yeah. <clears throat> you would take your shorthand and put it into the typewriter in wor- real words, you know. That's wild. So, yeah. Hmm. So you went... <clears throat> was it a big change for you to go start using computers? No. Uh-uh. I mean, it, it just evolves. Keyboard's basically the same as a typewriter, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I would type like I did back in the uh, secretary days. Mm-hmm. Whereas I see the kids today, they really do it differently. Really? <laughs> yeah. They're, they're so quick and uh, yeah, uh, I don't even look what they're doing. I've said this before, but... <laughs> In high school, they had keyboard in class, and I didn't take keyboard in class because I didn't want to know how to play the, the keyboard. I oh. thought it was a musical <laughs> instrument class. It wasn't. It was it's how to type, type on a yeah, keyboard. Right, yeah. Which, in my head, should have been called typing class. Well, they should have explained to you what it was all about. We had really great counselors, you know. I <clears throat> I never went and saw them. <laughs> but... I tell you, one job I had before the telephone company was at Famous and Bar, which is, I guess they call it Macy's today. Mm -hmm. But back in that time, uh, when you had credit, you had to get an okay for every purchase. And so my job, I worked on the sixth floor in a little room with drawers and drawers and drawers of index cards with people's name on it and their address and their credit line and so they would shoot these uh, when somebody purchased something they want to put it on the charge they'd shoot the um, statement that they had the sales statement Mm -hmm. into this tube and it would get sucked up to the sixth floor and you've probably seen it yeah uh, like the uh, vacuum tubes like they they still use them at banks and they still use them at like home depot and stuff for money drops right well that this was all for the credit and then when they would come up to the sixth floor where I was at, I'd have to uh, look up their name and give them an okay. And then I'd send the okay back down, back the down to the tube. Yeah, <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. 
What What was your most fun job? <clears throat> I think just being a parent, being a mother. Did you not work while you were? I always worked at something. Yeah. I always made money. Not a lot, but, you know, it's always a helps. contribution. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was always in a, making a contribution. So, I I mean, I've only been a parent for nine months now. Not, <laughs> I don't even know what. Who's the oldest? Uncle Jimmy's the oldest, right? Or, no, your mom. My mom? <clears throat> was she 60? Mm-hmm. I can't remember. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you've been a parent for 60 years. I've been a parent for, like, nine months. Mm-hmm. But so far, by far the most rewarding thing ever. So, I can't imagine <clears throat> another you know, what, 59 years of this? I've worked with children, though, all all my life, it seems like. You got, uh, I know you have one brother, Two. right? Two? And one sister. Oh, for Aunt Fran. Yeah. Aunt Fran, Uncle Mikey. Mm-hmm. Who's the other one? Steve. Why do I not remember Steve? Because <clears throat> he's a pretty well lost individual soul he's a lost soul he could not quite get his act together is he still around i think he is yes but he um never could be his own person yeah was he following somebody's was he trying to chase somebody else no he just um i don't know how to describe him he wasn't he didn't he wasn't a bad person yeah and he wasn't into drugs or crime or anything like that he just does lives totally on his own. Yeah. An older brother, younger brother? He's the youngest. So what, what order does it go in? Uh, <clears throat> Aunt Fran's first, mm-hmm. then myself, and then Mike, and then Steve. And there's quite a gap in years. Is there? <clears throat> Steve's like really young? No. Uh, my sister and I, there's two years apart. Then when Michael came, it was... Uh, Nine years plus, and then two years later, Steve. Three years later, Steve. Okay. Hmm. And you have four kids. Correct. My mom, Uncle Jimmy, Jimmy. and then there was a ten-year gap. And and then Jason. (laughs) Are you following your mom's footsteps? (laughs) And then there was another nine-year gap, and I had Jane. I didn't know that they were that far apart. Holy cow. If they would have had vasectomies back then, do you think you guys would have got one? Oh, gee, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I like the idea of birth control. Yeah. <clears throat> because I, don't, I don't know. that it, it messes with Jen's hormones, and she doesn't like it. The the pill or the vasectomy? The the pill. The pill. vasectomy is for the, the guy. Right, I do know but, that. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I don't... Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's I think my brother in law is going to get one mm-hmm. because he's like, yeah, it's gonna not feel good, but it's also gonna be much better than you know having another kid. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of things changed. There was no such thing as birth control back. Then. Right, that's why I'm asking you. I'm like, man, you guys didn't you didn't even have those options. Yeah, well, we did later. You know, by the time I got to yeah, uh, I guess. It, birth control came out for the, I guess, general public in the 60, early 60s. Oh, wow. Very early 60s. But people were afraid of it. Uh, so it was very... Uh, I understand. Yeah, not I looked at as like it's so common well, today. let's go do it, yeah. yeah it's no. tried and true now. It's yeah, tested. that's what they say. Um, so. <clears throat> yeah, so what... Uh, what would you say was your best moments in parenting? Like, what it, what do you feel like helped you the most in dealing with raising kids at so many different stages of your life? Because, I mean, when did when did you have your first, when did you have my mom? How old were you? 20. You were 20. Oh, no, 19. 19. So you had kids when you were 19, probably 29 or 30, and then when you were 40? Right. That's insane. <laughs> no. It, <laughs> uh, no. <clears throat> it was Did it get harder each time? Oh no, I loved it. It was a blessing. Really? Yeah. I enjoyed 
parenting. Who's your favorite kid? No, I'm kidding. Don't answer that. <laughs> yeah. They're no. they're all special in their own yeah. way. I no, I that. was totally devoted to parenting. I, I loved every minute of it. Yeah. I, I will say I loved having you having I love having you as a grandma because I had some of the best birthday cakes I've ever <laughs> tasted and seen. Oh, that's um, cool. <clears throat> Yeah. I hope I'm more worthy than the cake. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> so that's what that's why we're doing this conversation right now. But even as a little kid I took care of kids. You know like your own or my brothers. Your siblings. Took care of the brothers. But then uh when I was five years old I remember taking care of kids. We even have pictures of me taking care of them. So. I don't I don't remember anything when I was five. Oh. Maybe I do, but like I don't know. I thought I feel like I have a good memory, but I mean, well, coming coming to realize, I probably don't. You have a lot of videos that could uh, refresh your memories. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what did you? So do you have like now? We have everything that it's digital. All the pictures are digital. Mm-hmm. All the videos and stuff are digital. You didn't have that. Nothing. No. I just, mean, I, I remember Bunker would go around with his thirty-five millimeter camera and take pictures and. You know, half of them would turn out good, and the other <laughs> half would be like brown. Or I think it's a little more than half. <laughs> I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. But okay. um, no, I had. Uh, well, you couldn't even afford. I had, uh, which I've told the story to your mom. I would buy one roll of film per month, so I could take twelve pictures of each child a month. Yeah, baby, which was be Nancy and Jimmy, mm-hmm. and they were black and white. And we did not have color. And uh, I would uh, take them when they were one month, two month, three month, and yeah, uh, have them developed and put in a scrapbook. You still have that? Yes. I was going to say, I think you showed me some of it a couple months ago. Yeah, I probably did, yeah. I remember you had a room full of teddy bears. Yes, I still have them. Yeah. But I can't have them out now because we have these four-legged Paw people that paw people <laughs> think that they're they're toys. Oh yeah, that's so. Yeah, you. I can understand how they would think that. Yeah, I mean, you had. Uh, I told you this before, but you made me take out the grizzly bear so you could sleep in the bedroom. <laughs> I was scared of that grizzly bear. I heard bad <laughs> things about grizzly bears, <laughs> and the bad things would grow roll through my head before while I was trying to sleep, and I was just paranoid. Yeah, well, <laughs> we, we got rid of the grizzly bear. Yeah. But you also had to have the little The small, little black one, right? Kind of brownish, but yeah. it was mink. Yes. It yes. was a mink teddy bear, but it was, oh, maybe six inches or more. Yeah. And you would cuddle with that one. <laughs> I remember I went over to your house to spend the night once, and I guess I said something bad, but you grabbed me and you said, you do that again, I'm going to wash your mouth out with soap. And you did it. And it was like Dove soap or ivory soap, the brand. And it was a white bar of soap. And I remember it. I was just like, oh, wow. I better not mess with grandma. She's serious. Because <laughs> that soap did not taste good. Well, I ask you to <laughs> taste it to see if you wanted to have your mouth washed out. <laughs> that was probably it. And I was probably curious. You did. <laughs> so you just stuck your tongue out tiny, yeah. get a little taste of it, <laughs> and decided you didn't like it. I would probably have never done that. Yeah, I was going to say, you remember it better than I do. Yeah. Whatever whatever you did, it worked. At least, I'm, I, th- I hope it did. Well, it <laughs> I probably I wasn't being a little made turd. you a- angry with me for probably <laughs> forever. No, uh, not forever. Probably for a little bit, but... No, I, <clears throat> that was the thing in the day. You said bad words, and the words you said aren't even considered bad now yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's normal language i remember the other thing was you had to have kitchen clean hands and uh, if you look at my hands now you're like <laughs> oh they're not kitchen clean <laughs> they're almost never kitchen clean yeah <laughs> because uh, yeah that was a grease. big thing with the germs the germs and the the uh keeping the maybe that's why i'm kind of a germaphobe now i'm not really a germaphobe at all but I am more conscious of it than mm-hmm. some most people. Um, but, like, you had to have kitchen clean hands to touch the piano. Oh, yeah, definitely. And no drinks around the piano. Yep. No liquid. <clears throat> yep. I'm the same way around my computer. I'm like, nope, Jennifer, we need to get that get that off that desk. <laughs> yeah. 
that's true because things happen. Yeah, they do, and it, when they after they happen, it's too late. So it's just like, well, okay, now we got to deal with it. And I'm like, we're not, we're gonna just avoid that mm-hmm. potential hazard as much as we can. Yeah, Jason loved the piano, but he it was a player piano. Yeah, it is a player piano, and he loved pumping. So uh, pumping the pedals. Yeah. Did that mess it up? No, it played the music. Oh, really? I didn't. I don't know you, how it works. I, I could put really it on know. electric, and it would go by itself mm-hmm. on electric. Or you could uh, put this case down below, and there were two pedals there, and you would just pump them, and that would play the music. Mechanically move Yeah, the, the air would uh, go through the little hose in okay. the player piano part. That's cool. So you could go either way. Um, so Uncle Jimmy got a hernia when he was a baby? He did. He uh, was, wasn't even two. He was, um, I don't know, maybe 19 months. Yeah, he had a hernia. He was Mr. Macho Man who thought he could do everything. Yeah. And he was picking up a bag of potatoes that was probably weighed more than him. <laughs> so No, it was a big... That was our memory that it was the potatoes. Yeah. A sack of potatoes that was, he decided he could pick it up even at that yeah. little baby age. That's funny. My nephew, I'll bring him downstairs in the basement where I had my kettlebells before I moved everything out to the shop. And I'd be like, all right, Logan, try to pick that one up. And he'd like go over there and like half heartedly try to pick it up. And he'd look at me, heavy, heavy. Yeah. <laughs> and then he'd go to the next one. Try to pick it up, look at me. Heavy, heavy. I'm like, yeah, you'll get there one day. I mean, that is like half your weight right now. So. Yeah, oh, wow. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, but I didn't he, actually expect him to pick it up. Yeah, well, he was a premature. Uncle Jimmy was? Uh-huh. I didn't know that. Oh. So when he was actually, how much premature was he? Well, I don't know. But he really uh, spent his first Oh, several weeks, maybe a month. I don't know. It's hard to remember. Mm-hmm. In the hospital, in the incubators. Yeah. He was double incubated back I don't then. Know anything about well, it. That's but... different now today. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> he had the advantage because he weighed uh, six pounds. Oh, wow. So. Yeah, that's pretty That's pretty early. Yeah. They said if he'd have went all the way, he would have really been a buster. Oh, goodness. That's the doctor's words. So did you have to get induced? Did they do that back then? Or was that just naturally oh, he was premature? No, it just came. Oh, wow. No, I had no, it wasn't me, anything. It just happened. And how big was mom? Six pounds. Uncle Jay? Six, oh, he was seven and a half. Seven and a half. And then Jane? Almost nine pounds. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Your body knew, knew what was going on then. It was like, okay, we got this. Yeah. So Uncle Jay also has feats of strength, right? Yes. What's a couple of those? Because uh, I let's let's clarify this. Uncle Jimmy was very athletic mm-hmm. all through, and your mom, and too. yeah, they're very much the same cut of the same cloth, kind of. Um, and then Uncle Jay and Aunt Jane, they're kind of cut from the same cloth. Is uh, they're just a little more husky and their own. They have strange strength <laughs> in a different way. They, yeah, they both are very. St- all all my kids are very. St- yeah, but I was too. I believe it. Uh, I have uh, memories, I guess, or when they signed my yearbook in high school. Mm-hmm. One of them is like, uh, I'm glad to have met the strongest girl in the world, or something <laughs> like that. What did you do? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys have like physical fitness tests oh, or anything? Oh yeah, I did. I was the burpee champ. The burpee champ. What is what did that entail back in the uh, 50s, 59s? Oh, <clears throat> well, fifty four. Fifty four. Yeah. Oh yeah, you were so that was fourteen. Well, I was in high school. Yeah. When did you start high school? Uh, when I had just turned fourteen. Yeah. So, almost thirteen. Goodness, you started early. No, I got double promotion. <laughs> so you were super smart? Well, I was okay. Above average? Well, I don't know. How did that, How did you get in early? How did the school systems work back then? 
Um, Because, I mean, now you're not in high school until you're like 14. Yeah. Well, I, um, the deadline to get in to the school was the 15th of September. And I was born the 14th. So I qualified in other ways, in many ways, to get in. And then after I was in there, they double promoted me. So I skipped third grade. (laughs) Uncle Jay told me a story about that, too, that he kind of skipped or uh, dropped out something. He, He wasn't intrigued enough in high school, so he basically dropped out and went into yeah. something else. Yeah, he got his S, uh, SCD, is it called? G- GED. GED, yeah. Yeah. And he had um, scored higher than anybody in all time. Yeah. For his GED. It was... Which later, I'm going to have a talk with him too, just like this, and I want to go over some of that stuff because, like I said, the more time I've spent with him, the more stories I've heard, and the more I've just, I didn't even know. He just told me something yesterday that I was like, What? And so I'm excited to to have him on too. And well, when he was, I guess, sixth grade, he tested out up to eighth, twelfth grade, I think it was, in subjects. Goodness. Teachers didn't like him. Yeah, he was <laughs> because he knew what he could get away with and what he could do. And oh, and they tried to uh, punish him, I guess, or whatever. They tried to catch him in lies. Mm-hmm. He would never lie. Yeah, and that just shocked those teachers because the way they ask a question or the way they say it to you, it makes you feel like you got a lie. Mm-hmm. And he would never do that. Yeah. So he. I, I'm the same way now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a it's a good thing and a. Oh yeah. I mean, it hurts some people's feelings, but you know, for the most part, mm. it's it's good. Um, yeah, he's a go getter. <laughs> yeah. So he, one one time, he had his cyclone here in the garage at mom's house, and I don't know, the probability of this happening is just so small. He had to have it over here for, for something. He had to have something done in his garage or something. I don't remember what the deal was. But his nice car that he'd been working on for many years and spent a lot of time and money on was sitting here under a car cover, Something in the garage just happened to fall that day off one of the shelves and kind of ding it or scratch the paint or something. And the spring on the garage door broke. And so I was in high school. I was probably a sophomore or something. And I see him come out. I see him get here. He's all, I could tell he was steaming mad. And I walk around the front of the house and I see him at the front of the garage door and he squats down and heaves up the garage door and the springs broken and it's a double wide door seven foot tall and he gets it all the way up and so he can pull his car out because he needed his car and I was like oh man that's probably he made it, it like it looked pretty heavy and so later that day I go out there after the garage door was closed because he closed it after he left so it wasn't just hanging open and I tried to pick the door up and granted I probably only weighed about a buck thirty and that door probably weighs about two something I tried with all my might to pick that door up from the outside I think the door had a handle on it I got it maybe two inches off the ground (laughs) and my hat fell off and got stuck underneath the door when I let it slam down because I couldn't hold it anymore and I was like man and I told him about that story and he's like I don't even remember that. I just know I needed my car. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I could tell you when he was in college, he delivered pizzas. And he went to uh, deliver these pizzas to these um, guys of color, I guess. Mm-hmm. I'm almost afraid to say anything in this day. I don't know. But anyway, they weren't going to pay him. Yeah. And they said, well, that's tough stuff, white boy. And he told him they needed to give him the money for the pizza. He mm-hmm. knew he wasn't even going to get a tip. Yeah. And they laughed at him. He said, you either give me the pizza or I'm going to turn that car upside down. And they laughed again. So he went over and he turned the car, picked oh the car God. up. That is just nuts. And it freaked him out. And they just Did he said, actually turn it over on the side? He was going to. He had it picked up. 
And then they screamed. They said, oh, 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 man, man, we're going to pay you. So they, they gave him the money for the pizza, and he left and went back to the pizza shop and quit. Good for him. That's, yeah. that's just wild. That's one of those stories that just doesn't seem true. But Right. Yeah. But it just shows you that it was superhuman uh, strength Yeah. Um, for his own protection. Yeah. You got to, I don't know, I call it the rainy rage. It could be. Good. And it's it's a blessing and a curse because you got to know when you can use it and you mm-hmm. got to know when is not the time to use it. Yeah. Because well. I'll tell you, I go from normal conversation like this to like tunnel vision, everything's quiet and mute. And I feel like I could, you know, smash through this table right now. And not everything in life needs that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can. Jason has it kind of thinking i guess so. yeah we kind of talked about it a little bit but um it was pretty hard to deal with as, as a, a parent yeah well how did you what was a way that worked or was effective <laughs> you probably don't remember but i used to have him lay down on the bed flat on his back mm-hmm. with his hands <clears throat> to the side like this yeah and do nothing but just lay there quietly. And it worked? He could calm down? Yeah. But he also, uh, you'd probably get mad at me telling you all this stuff. He's 50 years old. He's <laughs> grown up. <laughs> but he, he chewed his blankets. He had a corner. Even when he was a tiny baby, the corner of the receiving blanket where the seam ended, Yeah. he would uh, chew on that. Mm-hmm. And then even later on, he always chewed the edge of the bed sheet. Hmm. So it was like a nervous uh, I wonder what that was relaxation yeah. uh, type of thing. I wonder what triggered that or what caused that. Well, he did have convulsions at one time, so I don't know if that would be like a seizure? Uh-huh. When he was younger? Baby. Yeah, he was under 2. And do you know why what led to it? Just No. Well, he had I just had him at the pediatrician, which was like barely half a block away when he went into seizures um, and uh, he had a little bit of fever mm-hmm. but the doctor that I just left said everything was fine hmm. so then by the time I got to uh, the corner there he went into it was horrible <laughs> a very bad experience yeah I could not imagine that like so uh, and I got out of I had the van all by myself of course and uh I got walked up to the lady behind me uh, and asked, you know, told her I needed some help. So she put me in her car and drove me just around the circle there, which was Children's Hospital, Mm -hmm. because it was there at King's Highway. And then she told me she'd uh, take care of the van because I left the motor running right in the middle of the street. Yeah. And then uh, she, when I came out of the hospital, I was looking for my van and. She had had the mailman park it somewhere else with the key in it so that I could go back to it. That's so scary for me to even think about. Yeah. You know, and like when that happens, there's nothing you can do. Well, and this lady that helped me was full of jewels in a long, long length mink coat. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, it was like. A, that was nice. She helped you. Yeah. Yeah. And. uh then when I found out who she was, she was a, a well-known figure here in St. Louis. Really? Yeah. So that was... Uh, You're running with fame under <laughs> terrible <laughs> circumstances. <laughs> but uh, he turned out to be okay, but uh, he had convulsions. and That was... That it. was just it? The one-time episode? Yeah, that was it. And um, it seemed to me that they don't usually have convulsions either at the age he was. It's hard to remember all that because you try to... don't want to have to relive that no especially after having one right now like i don't know i don't want to think about anything bad happening Mm -hmm. well you don't but if it happens you you take care of it without thinking you just do what you do yeah yeah Yeah, i mean i've he's been choking on bread just sitting there not breathing i'm like oh yep i know what to do here (laughs) yeah turn him over and give him a couple pats on the back or don't give him bread (laughs) yeah yeah i mean so, he's no, he's got to learn a lot of ups and downs in raising kids. Yeah, I think, I think being married 
and then being married and having kids are is probably the hardest yet most rewarding thing I think a person can live through. And I mean, a little bit of it is selfishness. So I think it's, it can be selfish in the way of, well, I want to raise a kid because I think it would be fun and to experience that, that love. And that part makes it selfish because that's just for you. You want to have the kid. The kid might not want to actually be here, but it's selfless because you give up so much of your time and energy to put towards raising this kid and it takes a lot of time and effort to make a relationship work and honestly the first time I was engaged I didn't know that I was doing it for the wrong reasons and like deep down in my gut I think I knew that it wasn't a good idea and it wasn't right but you know you don't know what you don't know and being young and only knowing what other people around you are talking about and what other people are doing, that's all you, that's all you have. Like you're like, okay, well, I guess that's what you do. And it, it wasn't, there was a thousand other options I could have done. So I'm, I'm really glad it worked out the way it did. And, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully I don't have to go through that because I can't, I couldn't imagine, you know, having, seeing one of my, a little little baby having a problem that you can't help. Well, <clears throat> it's it's part of life, and it happens. Yeah. And as far as I was concerned, I never gave it a thought. I just did what I had, what I wanted to do, and mm-hmm. and I just liked everything about it. Uh, bad or good, good or bad. You, you got to see. You got to. It's what you make it. Like we said earlier. Yeah. And, I never give it a thought. It's just what was there, and it's what I did. Yeah. Whereas I never thought about what I could do or couldn't do. So I was just glad that I had circumstances around me that uh, were good. You know, I had a good husband, had good friends, uh, and that all plays into it. Mm-hmm. So. How did you and Bunker meet? Well, we had the same kindergarten teacher. I don't know if you knew that. Were you in the same kindergarten class? No. He, I think, he had morning kindergarten. I think I had afternoon kindergarten. We had the same teacher. How old, how much, what's the age difference between you guys? One year. Oh, wow. Uh, He was older? Yeah. Uh, So, uh, we we don't know, you know, we just know we had the same teacher. Mm -hmm. And... uh, in fact, I have a picture of him with the kindergarten teacher, which is really unbelievable. Today's kindergarten teachers would flip if they seen how that teacher had to dress. Really? Yeah. Super proper? Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, you might not know this, but teachers were not allowed to be married. That doesn't make sense. You cannot be a teacher if you were married. Well, what was their reasoning? Because you would not be devoted to your children you were teaching if you had your own children that was my assumption i don't know if that's true but uh times are it different. was <laughs> well it was in the late 50s it was in the 50s maybe the middle 50s when they finally let teachers get married and of course i knew one teacher that was married and we were not going to snitch on her because we really liked her <laughs> so yeah, I, I could imagine that what made a good teacher back then probably makes a good teacher even yet today. Oh, yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. I do remember all my teachers' names. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm. I had some teachers up in Iowa when we moved up there that I have no idea. I think mm-hmm. her name was actually, oh, I could be wrong. I think the school's name was Jordan Creek or mm-hmm. Jordan Creek Elementary. But I think I remember most of my teachers as well. I mean, you spend a whole year of them. Yeah, well, that's what I say you do. Uh, yeah. Miss Judy was kindergarten. Oh, my gosh. You'd never call a teacher by her first name. That's what they. That's what she wanted to be called, I guess. Maybe the last name was too hard to say for a, yeah. a kindergartner. But Well, that's today's world. <laughs> yeah. It's no... It's, not as formal, I guess you'd say. 
So you and Bunka met when? Well, he was a neighbor. Really? Uh, and I can remember being at his house to play with a friend that lived by him or in his house. Mm-hmm. They had brewing houses that they rented out, and I can remember being over there. And I can remember him riding his bike like he's some big shot. Was he? <laughs> he thought so. <laughs> <laughs> He had that bike. He rode that bike all the time. Yeah. But uh, I didn't have a bike, so that's why I thought he thought he was a big shot. Mm. <laughs> and then we went to the same church in the same high school. So it's just always there. Yeah. What uh, What initially attracted you to him? Was it a physical attraction or was it a, um, I like what you do? No, we... Uh, Went on dates. I fixed him up with a friend of mine. He fixed me up with a friend of his. And somehow it evolved that we were going out together. <laughs> <laughs> it just evolved to that. You guys were in high school and then it started happening? Yeah. And then, so you graduated high school. How old were you? I had just turned 17. And when did you guys get married? I had just turned... 19, I guess. And were you married before you had mom? Of course. I didn't know how it worked back then. <laughs> no. I didn't, some people now, they'll they'll know they got a kid, and they're like, we got to get married now. Oh, no. No, you... No. <laughs> we, we didn't uh, have that problem. So what was, what was the life expectancy then? Like, did you think that you were going to be sitting here, 80 years old, talking to your 30-year-old grandson, 31-year-old grandson? I never gave it a thought, but on the other hand, years down the road, I think about it because I have so many grandparents that live to be 90-something. Even my grandmother that was born in 1838 was 92 and a half. Holy cow. You were just, you got good genes. Yeah. And then my aunt, who just recently passed was 97 and a half well good um we got you for a lot longer then <laughs> i'm excited <laughs> well and then the other grandmother was 92 something like yeah. that and then uh, i had one grandmother that was 86 87 do you fear dying i don't think about it yeah. no there's no fear it's <laughs> when you go you go it's done I've done my thing on earth, and when it's time to move on, I'm I'm ready. Well, that's good. There's still so much that I want to do that I haven't yet done. Well, but, same here. So yeah, I told I told Jen. I said if anything happens to me, though, like I I've done what I wanted to. You know, I got married to a great wife. We have a great kid, and that's all I could ask for. No, oh, that's good to realize that. So. <clears throat> yeah. Um, you've gone through a lot of tough times in your life. Well, I guess when you talk about it, it seems like maybe that would be the case. <laughs> well, I mean. But I, not really, not compared to what other people could uh, go through. Well, that's true. It's all, it's all relative. But like, yeah. how do you, how do you cope through, like, how did you deal with, you had a big, there's a big car accident. With, oh, yes, that was a tough one. Yeah, like I remember, you know, mom was like, hey, grandma's in an accident, everything's okay. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, I thought it like <laughs> fender bender or whatever, not <laughs> oh. let's come back on vacation from Florida and the van rolls a bunch and you lose some of your high school friends. Right, yeah. And then it goes into a lawsuit and then the lawsuit doesn't go yeah, it was the way it should yeah. have, and you know, and because of that, you found out you had like skin cancer or something. Yeah, that was a blessing part of it, right? Like it's it's just that whole scenario and that whole like year, year and a half of everything going mm-hmm. on. I was still pretty young, so I don't really remember all the details, but I remember the big the big stuff. Like I just yeah yeah said it was and, it was pretty uh, serious stuff. But you just go through it. And yeah, there's nothing you can do. Yeah. I never let it uh, get me down. I just, day by day. Did uh, it bring you 
you guys closer, you and your friends? Or did um, it separate some of them? Some of them, yes, for a while. But then when they realized that the rest of us, it was more the driver of the vehicle that was... Guilt. No, she didn't die. Um, well, I'm saying she probably felt guilt. Yeah, she did. And she didn't even want to come back and be with the group at all. Yeah. And everybody gathered around her and told her that she better come back. Yeah. And that we wanted her. And so everything's fine. It took a while, but yeah. Yeah. I but totally we only understand. had one person who was really, it was her husband, actually, who was really indignant about this person driving the vehicle. And, uh, but he's kind of a selfish. Yeah. So I, I, it sounds like it just from having that situation happening. And then if he gets an attitude about it, well, yeah. he's not in his right. Yeah. He wasn't even there. So, yeah. But his, his wife was pretty damaged. Really? Yeah. She was pretty damaged, but, uh, she's doing fine today. She got through it. And I think they were the most hurt by the lawsuit not being what it should have been. Yeah, they would have had some money recouped from Definitely, that, yeah. yeah. Definitely. It was a big deal. That's, yeah. that's unfortunate. Um, but like you said, it's <clears throat> it's what you see out of it. It brought you guys, you know. <clears throat> well, they, they claim to this day the only thing good out of that accident was me learning that I had the uh, cancer. <laughs> yeah. So... And, of course, that was easily taken care of. Just remove it. And yeah, a couple operations, and that was done and, and over. Cool. Yeah, that's scary for me. I always I always have all these, like, new moles coming up, and I'm always like, I'm going to die of cancer or something. Skin cancer is going to get me. Well, my skin cancer was one mole. That's all I had. Yeah. Bunka has thousands of them. Of moles? <laughs> yeah. A little exaggeration there. Yeah. Yeah, I had a lot of moles. Uh so, you know, you just, you don't know. Yeah. But as a child, I was sunburned. Oh, really? Um, I mean, we didn't have sun tanning lotion and all that. We mm -hmm. we used baby oil. That probably made it worse. Yeah, that's what they've <laughs> discovered. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I know some of the uh, gals from school, they talked about putting iodine in their uh, baby oil. I never did. But. That, I feel like, would be just for a look, to look like you're darker. I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> <laughs> what What's some weird stuff that people did back then that nowadays they've, they've changed totally their Totally changed. Mind. Yeah. <laughs> Baby oil and <laughs> diet time. What about, uh, when did they come up with the food pyramid? Oh, that food pyramid was really a bad thing. <laughs> I don't know if you heard about it, but when we had the food pyramid, they really... Uh, emphasized wheat mm. and the reason which nobody knew at the time they believed the government and I'll probably get hashed for this one but um, there were a lot of people growing wheat so it was a profit so the government you know they chimed in to make their that profit money, there yep. yeah that's so the the pyramid for food has totally changed it's I still like I'm I feel like I try to stay pretty in tune with what's going on uh, in that in that food health scene, and I mean, I I still don't know. Well, people believe the government. You know, if they did all this research and put this pyramid up there, well, it's got to be right. So you know, we were raised on mashed potatoes and bread and some kind of beans. <laughs> the beans yeah. part were good. Yeah, I like. I mean, I don't know. I assume food probably had maybe it had less chemicals but the chemicals that they did put on the food was probably worse i don't know well if you had a garden you you ate your own food so that was why you were limited because you didn't have the transportation for all this food to go from where it grew to people who couldn't grow it the same food were there bananas and oranges and stuff um i would say orange apples and bananas were probably the only fruit that was readily available. How did they get the bananas to um, St. Louis? That I'm not sure. I know. Did they still have big trucking companies like 18 wheelers and stuff back then? Oh, uh, we had trains that transported stuff. 
and then you had the trucks, but nothing like the trucks, not the semi things today. Okay. Uh, but a lot of most everything was local. You you ate what was local, what you could yeah. get. And I know at Christmas time that was when we always had an orange and an apple and lifesavers. Is that why my mom puts oranges in the bottom of the stocking? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> oranges and apples. Did she forget the lifesavers? <laughs> Oh, yeah, we weren't big fans. We liked the gummy lifesavers. Well, at least, you know, you got yeah. some lifesavers. No, it was tradition. It, it was a big Christmas. That The orange and the apple, that was when you got, got a big orange and a big apple. When, uh, What other traditions did you pick up from, from your family growing up? Um, well, the Christmas stocking, for starters. Um. Well, in today's world, you don't have go-to-church clothes. Uh, it's shocking at what I see people wear at church. <laughs> so, um, and we had play clothes. When you uh, got home from school, you had to go put your play clothes on. And when you got home from church, you put your play clothes on. Uh, and then you had school clothes and church clothes. How many outfits did you have? Not very many, just a few. That's all you need, though. Yeah. Like, that's what kills me. As I look at my stuff, I'm like, all the. also the other thing is I haven't grown. Like, I'm not continuing to get bigger. Mm -hmm. So I'll, all my clothes still fit. I have a shirt from elementary school that I still wear. Like, all my shirts from high school, I still have them. T-shirts, mostly. Dress clothes, you know. Like, it's all just accumulated. I'm like, I don't need any more clothes. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> stuff doesn't wear out at as fast as I get clothes. And yeah, well, most of the time I don't have too much. Yeah, yeah. Stuff way too much. You don't. They don't even probably use half of what they get. No, it's honestly disgusting because we moved so many times. You know, we went from my house in Hillsboro to my mom's house to Tennessee to my mother-in-law's house to our house in Arnold now, and it's just like we moved all this stuff so many times, and we use. 50% of it mm -hmm. and I'm like I wish I could get Jen on board to where it, it's very selfish of me to want to do this but I want to get rid of most of my stuff and go live in a van for like a year and really mm -hmm. know what it's like because I I don't need half the things that I have and it all depends on where you go though too <laughs> yeah I, I mean but in today's world anything goes I mean I'm I would never, ever go to the Fox Theater looking like some of those people that go there today. <laughs> I, there's some people who just... We dressed. I mean, that was a special occasion, so you dressed up for it. Yeah. So uh, that mean, was part of the cost of going to the event. Mm -hmm. uh, it was part of the fun of it, too. Yeah. You know, now I don't have very much that I look forward to getting dressed up for. Like, it's almost an inconvenience for me to go get dressed up. Mm-hmm. Like, every white shirt I have has a stain on it. That's, like, I, I don't wear white. It's not a good color for me. <laughs> I do too many dirty things. Well, ask your grandma to get those stains <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. I was good at that. I got probably two. I have one white shirt that I actually care about, and that was the first marathon that I ever did. Mm. And it's a very nice white Patagonia shirt. It says oh. Mark Twain Trail Summit. Yeah, that's so nice. So it's got the fancy fabric and everything, but I don't know. Um, yeah. Well, I know your mom has commented, or somebody has, that when they go through the pictures, they can't tell which generation it was because I'm wearing the same thing yeah. through all of them. <laughs> so. Yeah. It, you know, you don't need that many outfits. It just goes to show you. They still fit. Wear it. Yeah. And they're washable. <laughs> yeah. We're going through, we're cycling through Jackson's clothes. Mm. And there's a place called Once Upon a Child. I know somebody who. And Jen, Jen's like, hey, I'm, I'm making a run up there. I'm going to get rid of all this stuff. I said, great. We don't need it. doesn't fit him. We don't need this toy anymore. And she comes back. I said, hey, you get money? And she's like, yeah, but I spent it all on clothes for him. I was like, well, <laughs> that's fair, I guess. He needed it. Yeah, I know somebody that had that uh the one in Festus. Oh, really? Is that the one you went to? 
Uh, there's one in Arnold now that's real well, Maybe close it was to Arnold. Us. I don't yeah. know. But that's too many years ago. Yeah. So they might not even be there today. Yeah, it probably is. It was called Once Upon a Child? Yeah. Yeah, it's probably the Well, they could have sold it to somebody else. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so your traditions were your clothing, your apples and oranges in the in the stocking. Did you guys celebrate any other holidays? Did you like go cut down Christmas trees or anything no, like that? No, that's not available. We were lucky just to get a tree. Really? I usually ended up toting the school tree, the one we had in the classroom, dragging it home. You got it? <laughs> Did you have to ask the teacher before everybody else? Oh, they yeah, I guess that's how it worked. I don't know. But I know I drug it home for a Christmas tree. And uh, I don't know how many years, but I, I do remember uh, being able to have the tree and drag it home. Mm -hmm. I remember you guys had a tree in your backyard. What was it, a sycamore tree? Mm -hmm. And if you climbed up high enough, you could see the arch. Yeah, definitely. And then I think I remember climbing up there once and being like, scared this is too high <laughs> yeah your mom and jimmy were very good at that that was hide and seek yeah and now i would have probably love to go up there just with rock climbing and stuff and it's kind of cool to get uh ryan and kyle over to my house you haven't been over since i finished my rock climbing wall i think i saw it on, on facebook maybe yeah well, you got to see it in person. It's pretty cool. That's good. But when Uncle Jay comes and brings the boys, it's funny to watch them because Kyle will just go start picking up the weights and start moving them around. I was like, hey, you think you can pick this up? And he's like, yeah. And so last time they came over, he just started going and working out all on his own. Good. <laughs> and then he'd ask me, Jacob, can I climb on the wall? I said, sure. And so the first day, he was scared to get to the top. I think he might have got to the top. But then the next day he came out, he was going, he made it up to the top a whole bunch of different times. Hmm. And he was he was getting his confidence. So it's kind of cool to see him. You know, it's cool to see him, one, have enough confidence to go up and mm -hmm. just start. To try it. <laughs> yeah, just to try it on his own. And it's the other thing that I like is, you know, that's why I, I made that space was to, so people could use it in a comfortable setting and not feel, you know, because when you go into a rock climbing gym or something or, you know, a weightlifting gym or whatever, it's a little nerve nerve wracking. You oh. know, you're, you're kind of uncomfortable, out of your element, feeling judged. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's probably not the case, but it's way more comfortable when you're in a... Your own environment. Yeah. Feeling. Yeah. And so I like that he, he came over. Um and, and wants to play. They were on spring break, and he's like, hey, can we come over? I was like, yeah, come on over. Mm. So it's nice that, that uh, our schedules allow for that to happen. That's good. It's mm -hmm. good for them. Yeah. Your mom, um, she climbed a tree one day all the way to the top, and she got up there, and she started hollering for me. She couldn't. She was afraid <laughs> to get down. And I uh, that. So I wouldn't rescue her. I had her would tell her what to do to come down on her own. Verbally guide her. Yeah. And that is the best solution ever. Gives her confidence. And um, she climbed the tree again. <laughs> so. Yeah, I think there's, there's so many different ways a parent can screw up a child. And there's a very specific window of time that I feel like is crucial to their development. Mm-hmm how they grow up to be, and that's probably between 18, well, I'll say 20, all the way down to 8. But you don't know what works. Nobody does. Yeah, you just have to. And every kid's different. Totally. And it's just like, I I feel like all all of the, the screw-ups my parents made, I'm not going to make those but I'm sure I'll make other ones mm -hmm. that maybe their parents made to them. And like, I feel like it's just this weird cycle of um, errors. Yeah. But it turns out a lot of screw ups. That's what makes you. Oh, for sure. So like, without struggle, you, yeah. Yeah. So I couldn't agree with that more because the, the times you learn the most are the times 
it's not when you win. It's not when something works out. It's when something doesn't work out. Because then most of the time you get injured and you have time to reflect of, hey, why did why did that happen? <laughs> you know, but um, yeah. What's been what's been one of the hardest things for you to go through? Mm-hmm. The best you say would probably be being a parent. Yeah. Well, it was a time in life where things were tough in the late, before I got married years. As a kid? Well, teenager in high school. Tough in what way? <clears throat> Financially or? No, I'll tell you this off. I don't want it here. Okay. Um, so what happened? I I know that the struggle was hard for you when your job was to take care of Bunka. And then when he passed, like, that had to be... How did, how did you deal with that? Uh, well, I, it was hard because, you know, I've been day and night with him for 60 years almost. Yeah. And it's a piece of he's gone, and it's like, where is it? Why this didn't need to happen? Mm-hmm. So you get angry because uh, you think this didn't need to happen. Yeah. Because he was in such good shape mentally. Uh, His only problem that I could recollect would be the heart. Yeah. Uh, And that could have been prevented if he wouldn't have not have smoked. Smoking and bad diet. Yeah. Yeah. The smoking is a... And he enjoyed it. He wasn't about to quit. Yeah. But, uh, of course, he's raised in an era where you didn't know the danger or even you're addicted is what I guess you would say. Do you wish you would have quit? Oh, yeah, sure. Did you ever ask him to quit earlier? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We talked about it. Yeah. Well, tried to, I say. A one-sided conversation. Probably. Yeah, he's a little yeah. bullheaded about it because it's what he was going to do, and it's that's it. It's the way it is. It's what I want to do, and that's what I'm doing. Yeah. I mean, there's certain things you get to be selfish about, and, you know, <clears throat> I guess that's one of them. But well, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I remember just crying my eyes out when we uh, lost our first one. We had the miscarriage. That was, uh, you know, same thing. You get upset, and it's just like, why? Mm-hmm. And then you're asking why, but there's just no answer. Right. Yeah. It's just empty. Yeah. And you then just, you realize, you yeah, there's nothing you can do about it. But uh, taking care of him, I didn't mind. Yeah. It was, uh, I was there. I was glad I was there to be the one. Mm-hmm. And he made it very clear he wasn't going anywhere. Yeah. He, <laughs> he made it quite a bit longer than uh, they expected him to. No, he wasn't going to go in any old folks' home. Or no. no. He well, nobody was going to take care of him but me. So. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. I would probably expect myself to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably will too. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. That's, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about dying and death. And do you feel like there's afterlife, heaven, hell? Uh, well, I've been raised to think that. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you believe now? I don't or know. What do you feel? Um, I know I'm hopeful that there's something else. Whether I come back as a dog, a fly, a piece of grass. Something. Well, <laughs> there are visions that do happen after death mm-hmm. for, with, like, with your bunka. So that can make a believer out of you. Did he say he had visions? I uh, experienced. Like dreams? Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of nice. Yeah. Scary, but... Yeah, yeah, and it's like after I had this vision for a long time and then after I realized what it was about and why it was there 
and then the fact that I accepted it just never happened again. So it was like once you became at peace with what it what you had seen, yeah, then everything was like okay, you're okay. Yeah. And so and happen. I've never seen that vision since. Did um, it feel good to see it? It was puzzling because. <laughs> Where he was in the vision, he couldn't have been because he was somewhere else. He was in a hospital bed. But yet he was in the room with all your kids Hmm. and everybody. And it was like he couldn't reach me because of this crowd of Of family. family. And I'm over here and he's over here. So, and he gave me a certain look. And I guess that when I accepted that look, that took care of it. So that is kind of like a vision that you have from, I don't know what. It's make you believer, I guess. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so that's about about it. I told your mom about that. She knows. So I think that's what's really made her a believer. Yeah. So, and then, of course, we both, you know, we both went to church, and we both uh, were just good people. So, and tried to live a life that was right and do good. Well, you did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. So. Well, we probably should. Get my ears <laughs> done. Can we quit here for a little while? Yeah, yeah, we're good. We're good. Oh, never had those things on me for so